This is Vicky, director of the Institute. And right in front of me is an actual pre-questionnaire that was sent in to one of our practice coaching students. And she asked for some assistance in what is contained in this pre-questionnaire. So I haven't read through it. This is my first time looking at it, just like you are now looking at it with me. So we're going to go through and have a look and see what is standing out to us, what's coming up, what might be areas of concern for referral or for treading very carefully or lightly so that we can just sort of dissect this pre-questionnaire to prepare for the best approach for this new practice client. Okay, so looking at the first question here, I'm just gonna highlight each paragraph as we come to it so it's a little easier for you to see where I'm up to and what I'm looking at. So this person says in the area of they'd like to make change, if I were to choose one aspect of my life to change where I have the power to change, it would be to feel good enough. Now, feeling good enough, as many of you know, is one of the core limiting beliefs that we develop in childhood and we take into adulthood. So that's something that you are almost always going to have to address with your client at some point. So for this person, her inner voice has been telling her she's not good enough and she believes that this has led to other issues. So let's have a look at some of these issues here. Allowing others to treat me in a way I don't like. Issues with food. So here we have bulimia at eight. Food is an emotional void filler, significant weight loss and control. I find fault whenever I look in the mirror. And that's something with people who have disordered eating or eating disorders that they don't feel enough drives them to look a certain way believing that if they change the way they look they will change the way they feel and if you don't feel enough sometimes turn into food to fill that emptiness that longing that need for love that need for significance that need for someone to notice them and to see them that can drive emotional eating issues. Now, just on this point of bulimia, my question here to the client would be, have they been diagnosed? Have they received treatment? Are they recovered? Are they semi-recovered? Are they still receiving treatment? Are they working with anyone on that eating disorder? And any other question that might come up about that situation because that is something you need to be aware of. If you are not qualified to work with eating disorders, please don't attempt to. Make sure that that client is seeing somebody that is helping with that issue or work with that client and encourage them to take positive steps in addressing their eating disorder as you help work with their mental, emotional, and physical state. Always try and make sure that you're working with their care team for their best good. Okay, so moving on, missed opportunities. Won't travel by myself, delaying on a course, saying I'm not worth it, too fearful, not intelligent enough, lack of time, fear of saying no, so we can tell from that that she likes to please other people. Sometimes people who don't feel that they're enough, they like to go over and above to show people just how worthy they are in an attempt to actually feel good enough as a person. So people pleasing is a tendency and it does require accountability. And when you get to that section in the diploma course in module Eight, when you look at your own tendency, that's from Gretchen Rubin's Four Tendencies, and that will be very, very helpful in helping you work with people who do have a tendency to people please, meaning that they can meet outer expectations of them because they'll do anything to please the people around them, but they will not do anything to keep themselves accountable to meeting their own needs. They're very, very out of touch with their needs, they don't generally know what it is that is important to them or what's missing or lacking in their life because they're so focused on outwardly 
attending to other people's needs in their effort to feel worthy or to feel enough. Okay, so moving on, gather evidence as to why I'm not good enough. That's just the negative loops in the brain. The negative, uh, the negative associations that the brain has accumulated throughout experiences that then tied together build that emotional loop in the brain, those neurons firing and wiring together in a certain pattern that is evidence that that must be true for that person. So really that just means that they have a mindset that is fixed and it's based on previous experience. So that doesn't mean that the rest of their life has to be like their life thus far. It means that they can shift that, they can change that and that is where a holistic coach can come in fantastically to help that person first off become aware of their negative self, self-talk, explain to them about the negative habit loops, and then help them to start to challenge them so that they can start to learn that, well, actually there is equal evidence, if not more, that they actually are in fact good enough, that they actually do deserve to have a relationship, etc. So moving on again, I'm working on building my relationship with my mum, but my dad isn't interested in making the effort, so I don't have a relationship with him. Now, here is very, very telling here in the brackets. Can't be worth much if even my parents don't invest. This is something that you may come up against quite a lot as well. If our own parents don't love us, or if we perceive as children throughout our experiences with our parents that they don't appear to love us, then how could anybody else love us? So here is where the worthlessness comes in. We learn a lot from our parents. And unfortunately, because we're children and emotional brains, we don't always interpret mum and dad's stressful behavior, their temper, their mood, their in a hurry, don't have time for us behavior. We just don't understand as children because we don't know what it's like to be a grown up and have to juggle work and family and money you know we really don't so as children we just internalize all of our emotions and we come up with our own ideas that well it must mean that they don't have any time for me because i'm not worth spending time with it must mean that they don't love me so i'm not lovable see how this can all get tangled up in a child's mind and it just follows through in the subconscious into adulthood And this is what's really driving all of their negative patterns and certainly not helping them to be able to have a full and healthy life. Okay, so quite a few things from just that one question alone there. Uh, And just another thing up here in this bracket where I have the power to change, that's also quite telling. It means that this person doesn't actually believe or think that they have the power to change very much in their lives because they're stuck in that negative loop. Okay, so moving on to the next question. They'd like to change the following. See the positives. Look for further evidence to reinforce that she does want to be happy. So we're going to turn this around because that's the whole thing of moving from a fixed mindset to a growth mindset is we're pulling them away from that negative habit loop in their brain and we're starting to give them new evidence to counter all of the negative stuff that they've been telling themselves for many, many years. Okay, so I'm not materialistic, but I do wonder how people manage such nice lives. Okay, I try not to feel envious, but I'd like the things that create memories before I waste my life away. Okay, so to me, when I look at that, I also think because this person doesn't feel enough and they feel worthless, not worthy, that that also may tie into their food. If they are a people pleaser, looking after everybody else all the time, they probably are not taking care of their own nourishment because they don't think that they're worth nourishing. And nourishing isn't just about food, it's also about love. So just keep that in mind. Um, I'd like someone to travel with, I'd like to enjoy other people's news without it being tinged with my own sadness, envy. So very much uh, identifying with negative stories. I cry for me when I hold someone's baby. Ah, okay. So that again comes back to the parents feeling like when she was a little baby, she wasn't loved and that makes her feel sad for herself. Okay. So that comes back to not feeling lovable, not feeling worthy. Okay. I'm too nice and will help anyone. Back to people pleasing. It's not always reciprocated. 
but I'm so grateful when they do. This again is more about finding her worth by, by showing and doing things for other people to prove how worthy she is. So that's why it makes her feel good and she's so grateful for it because otherwise there's, otherwise, otherwise there's no way she really truly can feel that for herself. So I don't feel comfortable when people expect me to do more than the above and beyond that I already do and how I feel when I try to stand up for myself. Well, this is a pattern she's created for herself by prioritizing other people's needs. So this is again, something that needs to actually come back to her. The needs assessment exercise here will be challenging, but very, very necessary. Okay, moving on, same question here. I really would like a, someone, a special someone in my life and I wish I knew why the universe has decided that I don't deserve to be happy. This is where you need to correct the client and tell them that the universe didn't decide that they didn't deserve to be happy. They decided that they didn't deserve to be happy because of their early childhood experiences. And here we see more about that as she progresses. I had a dreadful childhood, abusive marriage, being raped, and so much more. I've been through enough. Why don't I deserve a turn? I make do and grab little moments where I can. This reinforces my belief of not good enough. Okay, so again, we're looking here at some really rough topics, abusive marriage and being raped. So again, the question would be delicately asked, have you received assistance, help, guidance, counseling for the abuse in your marriage and for the rape? It does need to be addressed in a sense that you want to ensure that that person has received the appropriate care for those experiences because you will not be trained unless you've done the training, you will not be equipped or trained ethically to work with this person on those particular topics. You can absolutely do some amazing, life-changing, transformative work, working around those things in the remnants of what those experience has left in them. And in this particular situation, obviously feeling like there's just one thing after another that's happened to her that is just, you know, in her mind, the universe reiterating that she's not good enough. She doesn't deserve to be happy. So again, it's the mindset and the experiences that she's interpreted to mean that she's not good enough and she doesn't deserve to be happy. And probably because of those experiences, she probably has a barrier or a particular mindset around allowing somebody into her life, as well as allowing herself to receive kindness, love, nurturing something that she didn't receive from her parents. So remember, it's always going back to what was learned and lived as a child. Okay, so specifically done to try so far. Okay, so there's quite a few things here. So we're looking at, she's done a, fit, a freedom program. I'm wondering if that is a food freedom program. It could be, there are some food freedom programs out there for eating disorders. New beginnings, pattern changing, group CBT, basic counseling sessions. See, again, here I see basic counseling, but I don't see specifically trained or specific sessions around abuse, which, which I would expect would have been experienced after those horrible experiences that she's been through. So just, just questioning that, just to understand what kind of basic counseling are we talking about? Was this not specially for these experiences that you've had as horrible as they were? Uh, Codependence Anonymous Weekly, that's an interesting group. Uh, workshops, acupuncture, time off work a few years ago after losing my speech due to stress. Antidepressants and sleeping tablets didn't help at all with my sleep. No, it won't because the worrisome loop in the mind doesn't shut off simply because you take sleeping tablets. It's the, the rumination of the mind that continues the negative feelings and feeds that belief all those negative limiting beliefs that I'm not good enough, I don't deserve to be happy, I'm not worthy, etc. And you know, antidepressants certainly won't help with that either. She doesn't have a broken brain, she's got a broken spirit and her a fixed mindset on negative experiences and beliefs. Uh, okay, so moving on, Louise Hay CDs and books, Melody B books, Katie Parker Daily Affirmations, Caitlin Moran book, John Bradshaw and other books. So she reads a lot. 
Now, my only thing with self-help books is that it's one thing to read the book and to gain the knowledge and to think that you know what to do. I know, I've read, I know it, I know it, I've read it, but I just can't change. And here is the difference. You need to understand the teaching. You need to live the teaching. You can't live it and shift it if you're trying to intellectually understand it when the problem was emotionally created. Various positive tasks, writing affirmations time for me. I now train and teach karate. Awesome, that's a great outlet for her. I would encourage the karate practice. I would encourage her to move back to yoga if that's something that she loved at the time. Interesting to find out why she stopped. Okay, so I'm sociable and believe I am in places where I could meet someone if someone was interested in me. So here, this is this last part of the sentence is really just the telling one. She is sociable and she thinks that if she was in certain places to meet someone that they would be interested. But if, if only she would, sorry, I'm going to start again, that in those places it would only be reliant on if someone was interested in her, which of course she's going to have a, a belief that well, no one's going to be interested in her because her parents weren't even interested in her. Okay, so what worked and what didn't. I've taken something from all of it, but I've never found counselling helpful as I think I need something deeper and someone to say, well, cut the crap, or I don't know why the asterisks are there if it's crap, but okay, so that it goes below surface level. Okay, so definitely as a holistic life coach, you're going to move beyond surface level because you're moving from the cognitive mind, the thinking brain, the analytical, rational, you know, trying to problem solve. You're actually moving down to the subconscious, the belief systems, the emotions, and, and really going a lot deeper than a lot of counseling, traditional therapy actually does go. I'm far more mindful now, but although I know a lot more in my head, see, here we go, she knows a lot of stuff in her head, it doesn't travel to my heart, to my beliefs of myself. Yeah, that's right, because you can, under, you can you know, have, understand it and have the knowledge, but you know, you really got to live it and apply it to be able to shift things uh, and really feel it resonating in your heart space. So, you know, again, that's kind of um, sort of self-explanatory for where we can see this client is at. So what do you think, feel or believe is holding you back from making this change? I don't sleep well at all, not slept through since I was about five years old. Interesting. I'm always tired and generally just getting through the day. So interesting she can actually remember from five years old that she hasn't slept well. So I would be asking, what do you think it was around five years old that interrupted your sleep? You know, what happened? What changed that if you can remember sleeping before five, why is it that five is such an important number that you remember you started having issues with your sleep? The universe keeps sending me experiences and events to remind me that I don't deserve to be happy. Fear of rejection and getting hurt again. The universe is not sending her these experiences to remind her that she doesn't deserve to be happy. The universe is sending her experiences. She's relaying them back to old events and coming up with the same old negative limiting belief because it's the same habit loop in her fixed mindset those experiences are asking her to do the work those experiences are asking her to dig deeper and hopefully she is because she's come to you fear of rejection and getting hurt again that just feeds into letting people get close and they're hurting her and just proving all over again that it's not safe. It's not safe to be in a relationship. It's not safe to have somebody love her, even though she desperately wants it. There is the conflict in her mind. And of course, you know, when we have a conflict between what we say we want or we think we want and what the mind, the subconscious actually believes is in our best interest to have, then there's going to be an issue because the subconscious will win every single time. So again, it's not what she thinks up in her conscious thinking. It's what she believes in her subconscious. All right. So first easier step. I don't know. Not, not unexpected here. I've accepted that I'm unlikely to have children, but acceptance of always being alone is so painful. See, this is the thing here. She's accepted that she's going to be alone because there's a belief there that I don't deserve to have anyone. I don't deserve to be with anyone. I don't deserve to be loved because my parents didn't love me. I don't know what it's like to be loved. I don't know what it's like to have someone to, to take care of me, to, to nourish, nurture me, to support me. So she spent her whole lifetime alone because she believes that, well, that's, that's my lot in life. That's what her subconscious is telling her. So 
that's something to really, really work on. Uh, finding a way to extend my acceptance without the crushing sadness. Well, I, I wouldn't encourage her to accept being alone at all. I'd encourage her to accept that she has every right to be loved. And when she removes that energy barrier from her subconscious that's blocking people from actually coming to her and accepting love and accepting being with someone and connection with other people without the fear of the past repeating itself or without the fear of being rejected, then she won't have to accept sadness. She can actually accept fullness of love and life experience. Okay, biggest fear or challenge, reinforced beliefs of not being good enough. Again, that comes back to mindset beliefs, what you discover, then what, what you can challenge and change. Fear of rejection, fear of getting hurt again. So, you know, really fear is something that's created when we don't feel safe, particularly when we're children. And that's what makes us come up with the, the you know, limited uh, maturity of trying to come up with, a, with an idea or a logic or a meaning with a brain that's not yet developed to do so. So as children, we feel those, those feelings of rejection and hurt and pain, and we decide through the meaning we give it that it must be because people hurt you, so don't let them in. I'm not good enough, otherwise they would notice me or they would be proud of me or praise me. What do you hope to achieve by working with a coach? Either acceptance without the sadness or steps towards feeling good enough and having some self-belief, a kind inner voice. So, you know, look at her stage at this point, what she's been through, where her mindset is at, what her belief systems are telling her, she can't see beyond that. And this is where your job is going to be, is to help to expand her mind, start to question and challenge the beliefs that she's existing in in her paradigm and start to gently encourage her to step out of that to look beyond the the limited acceptance of being alone and not feeling worthy but to step beyond that and start to accept that well life could actually be so much fuller so much larger so much more fulfilling and then get her to start to use that imagery to create more positive feelings and evidence from what she has accomplished on her own, feeling like she's been so alone, yet she's still here. She's, she's, a, she's gone through a lot of experiences, but she's resilient and she's strong and she's still here. So find her strengths, do a strengths assessment, you know, ask her about some of these experiences and start taking note and actually saying to her, you know, that was a really horrible, terrible experience for you to go through but you survived. You are a survivor. You know, reflect it back to her in a way that she can start to see it from a different point of view, challenging that fixed mindset, giving her a new way to think about the past, to reframe it, to start to see herself as so much more than where she has placed herself. Okay. And the last bit how to make the journey from knowing this stuff to believing it, feeling it. And that's something that's going to come throughout the coaching. This is something that I would not work less than 12 sessions with. And over those 12 sessions, whether they're weekly or fortnightly, I would suggest weekly. The consistency of the accountability, because she is a people pleaser, her tendency to meet outer expectations and not her own. She needs accountability, setting tasks each week and feeling good about small little tasks that she can notice actually contribute to her feelings of positivity and clarity and a sense of maybe I can change my life. Maybe, maybe I am worthy. Maybe I do deserve love. Maybe there is someone out there for me. And when I do this work, I'll be ready and they'll find me. So that's moving to believing and feeling. So I hope that going through this pre-questionnaire and this is a real pre-questionnaire that was sent to me from um, one of our students over in UK. Uh, hopefully this is very, very helpful for the client that you are going to work with. Staying within your boundaries, staying within your qualifications, working with her other team if she has one or encouraging her to reach out for the support she needs in specific areas, whether it be eating or abuse, and just supporting her 
giving her the love and support she needs so that she can feel that caring, that acceptance, that concern, that praise, all of those things that she didn't get from her parents and reminding her that she's an adult now. She can give those things to herself. Okay, hopefully that's been helpful and you've got some really great insights or gems from looking through this pre-questionnaire. It's always good to go through some of the actual pre-questionnaires that come in from some of the students. And when you get stuck, feel free to send it in and we'll go through it and everybody can benefit. Okay, here we go. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.